In The Hunger Games, what if when Katniss was making up a tune to whistle for the Mockingjays to copy, she went... <whistles> so, recently I've been going through a little bit of a rough time. My boyfriend and I broke up and the last couple weeks have really, really sucked. The reason I'm telling you this is because over my time on the internet, one question has kept cropping up and I've never really been able to answer it before. How do you get over a breakup? I've only ever had two serious relationships. One lasted for two and a half years and in the end I decided that I just wasn't happy enough anymore so I ended it. Because it was my decision, I felt better about the breakup because I knew that it was the right decision for me and that I'd eventually be better off for it. However, this time I'm the dumpy and I'm experiencing this wave of new feelings that I've never had to deal with before. But at least I'm now able to answer the question, how do you get over a breakup? I don't know. That is my answer to that question. I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows. There's definitely ways you can make yourself feel better about a breakup. Bitching with friends, eating your feelings, drinking your sorrows, finding solace in the arms of a stranger. But why I'm finding hard is listening to anyone who doesn't know the relationship like I do. Did. A relationship is entirely unique to one couple, from the way they say hello to each other to the way they yell at each other when they're arguing. The reason those two people break up is based on a problem that is entirely unique to them, that only those two people know about. So I've been finding it quite frustrating when I've had people saying, oh you're better off without him, you'll be happier with someone new. No one understands the relationship that I had better than me. When you spend a year with someone and see them every day and every night and learn the ins and outs of their personality, you see what they're like when they're usually alone, when they're usually switched off or off guard. You see their true colours and the core of that person. So I'm finding it really hard listening to the opinions of all the people around me who don't know all the things that I know and yet still think they're qualified to tell me how I should be feeling and what I should be doing. According to them, it's so black and white and so glaringly obvious what decisions I should be making. And you know, I'm not stupid. I know what the universally considered right things are that I should be feeling and doing. But there are things about the relationship that I have that are holding me back and for good reason. Just because I can potentially learn to be happy without someone doesn't mean that my life is better off without them. After watching years of Jeremy Kyle and yelling at the screen and deciding in my head who was wrong and who was right and how stupid these men or women are for staying with their partners who've made mistakes or just don't seem right for them, I now don't want to judge because from an outsider's point of view we think it's so easy to see what's going on and tell these people what decisions they should be making when it's just not that simple. It could be the tiniest detail, the smallest little thing between two people that makes the difference between them never speaking to each other again and them getting back together. And it's something that only those two people can see. I am the most appreciative for the people who are helping me through this crappy time right now, don't get me wrong. My friends are the best people in my life and I love them all and thank them so much for everything that they're doing for me right now. But I just know from the perspective of someone on the outside looking in at my relationship, it's easy to think that they're seeing things clearer than I am because they're not clouded by the feelings that I have. But it's those feelings that are letting me know that the way that I'm handling this and the decisions that I'm making are the best possible decisions I could be making for me. Anyway, I was invited to the Harry Potter studio tour recently and oh my god if you haven't been you have to go. Ah, it's incredible. If you're a Potterhead and you've not been, I don't know what you've been doing. But whilst I was there, my mum bought me a Pygmy Puff because they're really, really cute and I've always wanted one. But then the people that invited me to the studio tour also gave me one. So I've decided to give one away. To win the Pygmy Puff, what you've got to do is tweet me the most imaginative name you can possibly come up with for my Pygmy Puff and put the hashtag Puff Stuff. I will then pick a winner next week and they will receive my Pygmy Puff sibling and I will name theirs so we end up naming each other's. Also, even more excitingly, my t-shirts have now found a new home on DFTBA. The old t-shirts don't exist anymore, they are long gone and there is only one official hopeful t-shirt now with this gorgeous hopeful logo which I love so much which has been designed by Johnny Eveson and ah, oh, it took us ages to come up with it. It's got the raised pinky and the heart and the rays of light coming off of it and it's just everything that represents the hopefuls and it's great. Oh, I love it and I hope you love it as much as I do. So I will leave the link to them under my bed and my Twitter name and the hashtag for the Pygmy Puff competition. That is all.